We have new specifications for the 4000 series and they are updated again. Let's get into them, see what it's looking like. I didn't see too many changes here that I was excited about, but 8102 GPU with 16,384 cores and the 8103 with 10,240 cores and the 8104 with 7,168 cores. The specifications of NVIDIA's next-gen GeForce RTX 4090, 4080, and 4070 graphics cards have been once again changed in the latest rumor by copite 7 Kimmy. He's the one that pretty much leaks all of this stuff. The initial launch lineup is expected to include three graphics cards, the 4090, the 4080, and the 4070. The trio of these cards is expected to utilize Ada Lovelace GPUs based on the latest and greatest architecture and fabricated on TSMC's 4 nanometer process node which is a slightly optimized variant of the five nanometer process node. The rumored specs are listed below. The 4090 graphics card is expected to be powered by the top 8102 300 GPU, but is only the TI variant that will feature the full chip. The 4090 will utilize a slightly cut down configuration. The 4090 will use 128 SMs of the 144 SMs for a total of 16,384 CUDA cores. The GPU will come packed with 96 megabytes of L2 cache and a total of 384 ROPs, which is simply insane. Oh, this is the guy that says simply insane a lot. Simply insane. It's simply insane, guys. The clock speeds were not confirmed yet, but considering that TSMC 4 nanometer is being used, we are expecting clocks between 2 and 3 gigahertz range. As for memory speeds, the 4090 is expected to rock 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X capacities, which will be clocked at 21 gigabits per second across the 384-bit bus. From the mining perspective, as we've stated, we already have this in the 3090Ti, so we aren't going to see some revolutionary increase in Ethereum hash rate or even Ergo hash rate. The algorithms that might benefit from this would be something like potentially Ravencoin or Flux or of course, some of the dual mining ones, uh, potentially Al uh, Alephium, ALF would be an option. This will provide up to one terabyte of bandwidth. This is the same bandwidth as the 3090 Ti, as they state. And the TBP, or the total board power, will be at 450 watts, which means that the TGP may end up lower than that. The card will be powered by a single 16 pin connector that can deliver up to six, 600 watts of power. It is likely that we may get 500 watt custom designs. It's also important to note if you guys haven't checked out the Gamers Nexus video on power consumption with the 3000 series, it's pretty bad. And I think it's gonna get worse with the 4000 series. Now, a lot of people are using this as a, an excuse across the board to blame even AMD, but I'm not so sure that AMD actually has the same problem, just to be clear. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 is going to be a cut down 8103 300 GPU configuration with 10,240 cores or 80 SMs enabled for a total of 84 units. The GPU will become packed with 64 megabytes of L2 cache and up to 224 ROPs. As for memory specs, it's going to rock 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X capacity and are said to be adjusted to 18 gigabits per second speed across a 256-bit bus. That's going to provide only 576 gigabytes a second of bandwidth, which means really on the 4080, you're not looking at great speeds. What is that going to be? Cut down in half, 60 to 70 mega hash a second, somewhere in there on Ethereum. Maybe a little bit higher, on, or obviously a little bit higher on something like Ergo. It is kind of weird that the RTX 4080 will feature lower bandwidth than its 30 series predecessor, but it may be possible that we see a GDDR6X variant as a refresh. Uh, for power, the total board power is said to be around 420 watts. The 40, 4, 4080 is looking pretty bad for mining. Um, and then they have the RTX 4070, which is expected to be a cut down configuration of the 8104 with a slightly higher count than the RTX 3070 Ti of 7,168 cores or 56 SMs. The GPU will come back with 48 megabytes of L2 cache. As for memory specifications, the 4070 is expected to rock 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 capacities that are said to be clocked at 18 gigabits per second across a 160-bit bus interface. That is pretty terrible for mining. The card may rock a total board power of 300 watts, and the leaker also mentioned that the pricing of this card would not be lower than the 3070 or the 3070 Ti. We can basically expect a price bump in the 70-class graphics card segment. 
So what did we learn? With the updated specs, the RTX 4080 and 4070 you are looking pretty, pretty poor for memory intensive algorithms as it pertains to mining. We're getting higher power consumptions and lower total bandwidth. The only cards that will have bandwidth comparable to current uh, offerings is going to be the 4090 and the 4090 Ti. But those are just coming in basically exactly at that price or at that point without with higher power consumption. So nothing better than what is currently available. I'm kind of disappointed in the release or the specifications so far on the 4000 series. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. A little bit more excited for the 7000 series from AMD because at the top end we are getting a 384 bit bus. Albeit with GDDR6, but it's supposed to be the faster GDDR6. We'll just have to wait and see. EVGA has ended its queue system. So if you are scared of used cards and you're wanting to purchase new cards, well, it's going to be a lot easier. EVGA is stopping future GeForce RTX 30 series graphics cards orders from being added to their GPU queue program. This decision comes in delight after the, the decline of cryptocurrency marketplace and the rise in the stock of graphics cards from several manufacturers. However, EGA, EVGA is not removing the Q program immediately. They are doing so on a card by card basis. The first model to be removed from the program will be the For the Win 3 series, which is readily available to consumers. The For the Win 3 gaming GPU is considered one of the best gaming graphics cards. The GPU will be removed from the queue starting tomorrow on June 23rd. It is anticipated that EVGA will altogether remove its queue order system soon, but will be dependent on physical stock to fulfill the outstanding orders. Last year, the company went to sell available cards to consumers to make up for lost sales due to the GPU demand. That was halted abruptly after EVGA community went into an uproar in response to the company's decision. Within less than 24 hours, EVGA went back to prioritizing its clients in the queue and apologized for their decision. EVGA will contact consumers, notifying them that EVGA will delete the queue order and that their GeForce RTX 30 graphics cards will be available through EVGA's online store. Website Tom's Hardware reports that EVGA contacted them close to 48 hours in advance explaining that the pending orders for the card on file, which happened to be the For the Win 3 Gaming, were going to be removed from the queue due to the large amount of stock received by the company. While it's still unknown how many and when more GeForce RTX 30 series graphics cards will be removed from the company's queue system, it is anticipated that more graphics cards will become accessible over the next month to the company and consumers alike. At the time of writing, EVGA still sells their graphics cards at somewhat high prices, with no hope of discounts happening through their online store. It is suggested that consumers interested in EVGA or other manufacturers' GPUs should check various retailers such as Amazon, Newegg, and others for lower pricing on the popular 30 series graphics cards. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.